Abel Ferrara's King of New York, released in 1990, is a work that is considered by many to be one of the best films in the crime genre. With only minimal box office returns from its $6 million budget, Ferrara has often said that he never made much money from the film, as its success came later on the video rental market, and these days he makes little to no money from the film at all. But the film's notoriety and reputation as a stone-cold classic among film fans helped to get Ferrara to where he is in his career today. He's in a place now where he is able to make even more personal works of perhaps an experimental nature. This is not to say that King of New York is not a personal work. Ferrara has said in the past that it is a reflection of the times it was made and the new millionaire gangsters that were born from the 1980s drug trade that were gone from the New York City scene as quickly as they had arrived. He has also said that it is a reflection of the life that he and his crew were living as they themselves, much like the film's protagonist Frank White, and were living an exuberant lifestyle. I mean, those two films were many kind of specific era in uh, New York. You know, it was, it was pretty violent. You know, it was kind of a crack epidemic. It, it was like a certain kind of violence, you know, influenced the way we were doing. The lifestyle we were living wasn't, you know, the healthiest either. This personal content is something that is a constant through Ferrara's work, as far back as The Driller Killer. He has stated that The Driller Killer is something of a self-styled documentary about who he himself and his crew were at that time in their lives. You know, Driller Killer was kind of an improvisation around an actual, you know, not the drilling wasn't the event, but that lifestyle was there. With the film being shot without permits in his local hangouts like Max's Kansas City, friends apartments, and his neighborhood in New York. Later, Ferrara would go on to make even more personal documentaries about Mulberry Street and the Chelsea Hotel, as well as the web series The Pizza Connection, about street culture, gangs, and artists' hangouts around the city. All of these films show us that Ferrara's work is personal, and he makes films that he's interested in about the world that he knows. He has said that a lot of his works, such as The Addiction, could be considered documentaries, as their on-location settings show the culture of the time that they were filmed. You know, in the, in the front is your movie, behind it, it's a sociological study, where you're actually seeing the f***ing world. Examining this, one might say that this gives a reality to his work that creates a strange bridge between fiction and documentary, and I think this gives real-life connotations to his art. I believe that this part of Ferrara's filmmaking technique helps create his wholly unique style that he has developed even further in his filmmaking today. For example, in the pandemic, he shot his feature zeros and ones in and around his home on the deserted streets of Rome, adapting to this strange pandemic world and creating his art no matter what. Ferrara's work ethic is incredible and is an inspiration to anyone in the arts. King of New York is a film that is extremely important to me, and I've had the video store poster on my wall for years as a constant reminder that if you put your mind to it as an artist, you can achieve anything. Ferrara's work is an inspiration in many ways, but what is interesting to me is what we can learn about filmmaking from Ferrara's discussions about this film and its production. But this is so stylized by the time we're getting it that you could do this in here. You know, all you need is, is room to, to get back and to throw things, you know. He has said on more than one occasion that he would never make a film like King of New York again with the same production techniques, and that the whole process was one of extreme control and there was little or no improvisation for the actors. These people have no 
freedom. Everybody is where they are. They can't, not, not moving. That guy on the right isn't just going to walk up now and then, you know, somebody's not going to stand up and shake his hand, right? You know, I'm glad we made this film because I wouldn't make a film like this again if you put a gun in my hand. Ferrara and his screenwriting partner, Nicholas and John, had worked for over five years to get the screenplay to a place where they said there was no room for improvisation. We wrote it for five years, man, to get it sweet. But I like when people say, oh, I know, you, you make this up on a set. Yeah, sure, I'm making all this up. I just come and just make this up, out of sequence, on top of it. One of the biggest surprises I got was hearing Ferrara talk about one of the big inspirations on the film being The Terminator. I mean, I saw The Terminator. You know, I remember watching it and, and thinking, all right, is this what everybody wants? You know, so it was like kind of a film based on what I, I perceived as like an audience great reaction. All of this evidence tells us that Ferrara, St. John, and their team set out to make a movie that would be accepted by mainstream audiences and that they were consciously creating a work to be successful using the model of other films in the public zeitgeist, such as The Terminator. In commentary of the film, Ferrara has said that it's real characters based on art, based on hip hop music. Fishburne was playing a real person, or was he playing a person created by hip hop music? You think I mean? And those person exist or they only exist after they hear the songs. Happiest day of my life, you know why? Because we got a real live talking with witnesses. So this tells us that the film was steeped in pop culture and current movie trends from the very beginning. Ferrara has said in the past that it's what he thought audiences wanted, quoting that. I feel so restricted, I want to die. I mean, these people aren't going to improvise anything. But that's what people want. They want it laid, like laid right down their throat. Like, they don't want to think about nothing. So this is what Ferreira had in mind when he made the film. And the film was designed visually and narratively to cater to the current movie-going audience. Listening to this, we perhaps begin to realize what Ferrara means when he says he wouldn't make a film like King of New York again, even if you put a gun to his head, and that he hasn't got the patience for it. I don't know what we were trying to prove. I know what we were trying to prove. We were trying to prove we could make a film like that. All right, so we made it. It's a bourgeois way to make films, man. You know what I mean? It's just a, it's, it's, it's a real jerked off way to make films in, 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 a, in a certain sense, you know? Listening to Ferrara's own words, reading about the production of King of New York, I think Ferrara did his time, so to speak. And he made films in this Hollywood way and realized that there's a better way to do this. Yes, we can make films that look incredibly stunning like King of New York, but... We don't need to make them in this time-consuming way. There's a more free-form way of doing it. You know, you see these Hollywood movies and it's like, yeah, wow, these shots are unbelievable. And it's, yeah, well, it's fine, you know, great. But what's behind all that? What, what, what really is, you know, the essence of that? So in conclusion, we can look at the work the Ferrara, St. John and his team did in King of New York and see a few things for certain. It's not a film based in reality. It's a film based on hip hop music. It's a film based on other films. It's almost a love song to Hollywood. But there's definitely, this is a gangster movie. But then we're genre filmmakers, you know what I'm saying? So it's a tribute to filmmaking is what it is a tribute to, here we go. Because of the impact that this film had on me when I first saw it on video, I believe it's a masterpiece. But it's a masterpiece in the canon of work the Ferrara has made over the years that I think he's surpassed. Ferrara's a true artist, and we don't get many of those in our lifetimes. And he'll keep making films in his own way, in his own time, with his own techniques. And I think that's incredible. But enough from me. What do you guys think about Abel Ferrara and King of New York? Please let me know in the comments below. If you would like to see more films from this channel about the work of Abel Ferrara and other filmmakers, please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks so much for listening.